Mr. Prime Speaker, Minister? if I were the member from Ikusov and I had outlined so many projects and I'd find I'd find myself losing that seat and I'd find my majority reduced by more than half, I'd have been ashamed of myself. And the Prime Minister. Because if the Prime Minister can come to this honorable house and call and speak about Sir John, and he cannot recall how he treated Sir John's daughter, that reverence he has for the father of the nation, he did not have that reverence for the daughter of the father of the nation. But you know, Mr. Speaker, the member from Mikosov is self-righteous. He never stands and says, I made a mistake, I made an error, or I did not speak the truth. The member from Mikosov knows very well what happened with the road between Rodney Britain Grosile and between Kilago and just before the gas station. gas station. He knows very well. That road was built, started to be built without any plan. There was no plan to build that road. That road caused tremendous conflict in the Ministry of Infrastructure between the then Ministry of Infrastructure and the project manager who was actually somebody in charge of seeing about gardens in New York who he called an engineer. The person who was in charge of that road was a gardener who took care of gardens in New York and the member from Microsoft called him an engineer and put him in, put him in charge of that road project. That road project <coughs> had absolutely no design where it was started. That road project was a direct award given by another minister to a contractor with absolutely no designs or no joints. These joints were done on the job. They, in, and I do stop here. Mr. Speaker, on a point of order. Um, members, let's get this procedure correct. You don't put on your light and stand. Oh, my apologies. You put your light, I call upon you, at which point in time the member standing sits. We want to do procedure here, let's do procedure. Member from Miku South, what is the point of order? Speaking of point of order, the member is misleading the House. Um, my understanding is, is that the Ministry of Finance is the one who gives the... Um, the the direct order. Your point of a point of order is on your understanding. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Okay. And again, Mr. Speaker, I, I think it's it's unfair if I can indulge for a moment, Mr. Speaker, that we continue putting the public through he see I see. I'm certainly happy to have this discussion in a, well, select, started, a select committee. You started, I'm certainly you happy if we want to have a member. If session. I may, if I may guide you on these points of orders. You may wish to call on the speaker to request of the maker of the statement the evidence of which he speaks. <clears throat> but to come here and give your opinion, which the member of the Cassidy's office gave and you wish for a withdrawal, is not a point of order that can stand. Proceed, member for Miku South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On a point of order, I'd like the member to withdraw the statement that he's made. And certainly, if he's going to make that statement, Mr. Speaker, given that he's the Prime Minister, I would like him to bring the evidence of what he is saying. So if he's saying that the direct order was written by another minister, I think it's only fair, I it was written. given the controversy. That's what you said. I didn't say written. I can write that order. I said on the signed. advice, you and your friend. That's you gave it said. to me you I wanted to your friend. You know that it was signed it was by another minister. Word. I never said other so. than the Minister of Infrastructure. So if, if if that is what he said or did not say, Mr. Speaker, I think it's important that he provide the evidence as the Prime Minister. But you are asking to provide evidence on something he did or did not say? No, Mr. Speaker, can you advise me on what you heard him say? Okay, let me see what I said. Let me hear. Let me see what I said. <laughs> I said that there was no plan for the road. 
and the Ministry of Infrastructure and you had a conflict because the person who was in charge of the road was a man who was in charge of gardens, flower gardens in New York. And you made him chairman of a project management, a PMI, a project management thing, and you and the Ministry of Infrastructure fell out of that. And there was no plan. The chief engineer wiped his hands off that extension you did between the gas station and Kilago. The chief engineer had nothing to do with it. He said that that road, there was absolutely no plan for that road because there existed in the Ministry of Infrastructure a plan for the entire highway. The entire highway. There was a plan for the entire highway which was funded by the QBTs, which when you came into power, you cancelled the loan because you wanted to do it by direct award without a tender. And the curators, yes, you went to the curators and you told them to change the plan. And they said, no, it must continue. So you and the people of Grosley must blame you for this traffic jam. The people of Grosley must blame you for the confusion on that road because you were the one. You know, you Prime Minister, could you just hold on a minute? Which part of what the Prime Minister just said there you wish the withdrawal to be? Mr. Speaker, he had originally said that the... No, which part? Um, oh, okay. My statement has a great degree of specificity. Sure. So which okay. part of what he just said there would you like him to withdraw? Okay. The fact that he's making presumptions as to the, the communication between ourselves and the Kuwaitis, if he has evidence to support that, I would be happier with it. But the fact is, as a prime minister, he's not speaking as an opposition person. He must provide the facts. Bring the letter where it shows that the government of St. Lucia canceled the contract for the same reasons that he just said. Please proceed, prime minister. I was speaking as an opposition member to your own troops. That's what I'm speaking as. I'm opposing your own troops. Because you stand here. You said so many things here that, that, that I have troops. Anyway, let, let's get back to the road. So there was a complete design, a complete design for the grocery highway, a complete design. The four lanes, which has started, the Bois Bridge, which you, you, criticized because it was a bridge constructed for one in a thousand year hurricane event. That bridge was certified and verified by the Army Corps of Engineers. You speak about continuity. You commissioned a commission of inquiry by the audit department and by some other people. That's, that's, that's how I remain unnamed. The inquiry said that there were cost savings on that bridge of $300,000. What you did not do, what you did not do, you did not see that the bypass road cost $3 million that you gave full direct award. But that bridge now is ready for four lanes to continue the work on the Brazil Highway. There is, there was a plan well drawn out for the Brazil Highway. That plan and these documents are available, but if you want to go back, back into the past, we can go into the past. But you know, we are concerned. What do you want to do? You want to put us off from the progress that the government is making. You want to put us off from the evidence in the Caricus report. You want to put us off from the evidence from the Monetary Council meeting that the ministers attended, the progress of St. Lucia. You want to put us off from the economic progress of this country. So you want to take us in, 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 a, in a diversion so we can not deal with the progress this country is making. This, the, in the OECS, we just came from a monetary council meeting in the OECS, and that for the OECS, and that meeting will tell you the progress and the economic development in this country over the last year. But you want to go over, you want to go against the facts. You used to come and quote, and quote figures. Now you no longer quote, quote figures because the CAICUS report tells you different. The unemployment figures tell you different. 
the unemployment figures tell you different. The caricature figures tell you different. You, right, that's it. The caricature report on the government of St. Lucia. You refuse to quote it. You are not quoting it. You're not, you quoting, you are quoting from, you are quoting from, you are quoting, let me say. You are quoting, you are quoting from your head, but you're not quoting from the facts. Kaikus report, the monetary council report we came from this morning. About it. But let's get back to some some of, of the things you said. You spoke about the Miko Health Center. Do you know that that Miko Health Center was stopped in the year 2007 because the contractor was not one chosen by United Workers Party? Are you aware of that? Troops. You, all, you see, you like to insult people. You want to say your things, stand up. And when people leave, that health center was stopped. It started in 2006. The CDB, it was a CDB project. The CDB had chosen the contractor. When you won the elections, you stopped it. Not you, the United Workers Party. I don't know about the location. I know the CDB had approved it. So don't, so you must, you must, you should not come here and mislead the house. Let's go back for the several things that you spoke about. You, you approved, you approved the Belarus doctrine that said, if you do not support the United Workers Party, you're not supposed to get anything. Your own members stood here and said, if you just start to cry, if it's for that you cry, you just have to cry. You said nothing. You condoned state-sponsored victimization. You condoned state-sponsored victimization. You condoned it. You, you were the architect of state-sponsored victimization. You, the member for Miku South. I'll say the member from Miku South. You sit in this in this honorable house and you give the impression that you're such a champion for the needy and a champion for the poor and our projects are, are <coughs> pro this and that Vichy. We have a right to protect the victory against you. We have a right to protect the victory against you. Because if you are allowed to get back in government in this country, Kwapo spoke the pipe of the people of St. Lucia. So we have no problems in wanting to protect the victory. The victory is to allow you, to prevent you from ever becoming part of the country. That's what the victory is. That's what the victory is. That, that victory, we must, we must protect it. Yes, I have no say. I have no say, but the people have a say. That's what you are. The people have a say. And it's because of the people say you are where you are. The people put a say here. So you must not come to this house and mislead this honorable house. Everything you said there. Every, and I'm happy for you. Everything you said here in, in this house is a half truth. Everything you said here is, is a half truth. You fail to accept responsibility for your errors. You fail to accept. So what I'm saying to you, <coughs> member for, for Microsoft, is that this government will remain focused. We're going to remain focused. We're not going to be diverted. Look at the progress. Look at the systematic progress in this country. Look at education. Look at how we started from the basics moving forward. Look at the intervention we've made in small and medium-sized enterprises in this country. Look at how we are developing a new class of entrepreneur. We're not calling people non-entities. We're not saying because you did not have, a, you, you, your father did not leave anything for you, your father didn't have a business, but yourself can have a business. We are developing a new type, and you see the new energy in this country. You see an energy of progress. There's a new energy. There's an energy that is, there's an energy that you, you can feel it. And people come, and the only person, and you, you, member from Microsoft, you go all over this country saying bad things about the people of St. Lucia. You have gone to other countries, other countries, to exactly. other representatives, and you say the worst things about St. Lucia, all because the people of St. Lucia rejected you as prime minister. You must stop it. You speak about continuity. You told the public 
that a foreign entity will take the government to court. <coughs> you talk about continuity. You are the one who go to this to, to the airwaves and say the worst things. You calculate murders. Your members say that before the end of the year, over 100 predict over 100 people will die. You condone that. You, you say to the whole world, you talk about continuity. You talk about continuity when you almost gloat when there is when there is a murder in this country you grow up about it you speak about continuity when you wish that the tourism industry will collapse yeah. you speak about figures that don't exist just because you wish the country to collapse and you speak about continuity it's a fraud. you speak about continuity because only reason, because of your selfishness, because of your self-righteousness, you do not want to understand that the people of St. Lucia have taken a decision. Let's get, you speak about continuity, you speak about the airport. We have gone through length to tell you what happened on the airport. We said when we got into government, we formed a committee to look at what happened at the airport. Everybody, all institutions warn you not to go that way with the airport. You instructed Slasper. The Slasper he's speaking about. You instructed Slasper on the airport. The design for the airport. You changed it. You changed the designs for the airport that were approved. You changed it on your word. You just say changed it. You moved it to a location where the river, near a river, where everybody is saying to you, why? You know why? You did it because you wanted to encourage the SH. Yeah. And you raised it six feet. So you did it. So you, you can't speak about the airport. You have absolutely no legitimacy. Member from Eco South. Again, Mr. Speaker, on a point of order, the member is misleading the House. I'd like him to withdraw the statement that I am the one who caused um, the design changes to the airport, that I am the one who made all these different things happen. You, so took, the, you took the you to mean you personally and not your administration? Correct. Please proceed, my Mr. Speaker, there is a document that says that he Directed, directed Slasma to change the location of the terminal. He did it. Yes. You, you, listen to me. You're not giving me instructions, you know. You want to come and give me instructions. Don't give me instructions. You have the time to give me instructions. Your time to give me instructions are passed. You try. You try. You try to give us instructions. Uh, you came and you try and lecture us about things that do most of the time wrong. I don't know. You, you are in a position can give, 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 do this, do this, do that. Let me ask you something. You, the terminal building was located in a different location. You instructed Slasper to move it. <coughs> now you say it's not you. Unadvisable, you say it's not him. He's just saying it's not necessarily advisable. <laughs> but you just say it's not you. <laughs> It was a new impression of this What by Gino CDP? In the same report, this is what by Gino CDP. Was that? What by Gino CDP? Yourself? Yeah, that's what I forget. Where are you just get anything from? We said it's blood money. Seriously? I don't want to get it. Buy a seat. It's a very red. That's what we do with. Blood money. Blood money? Mr. Speaker, when I repeat it again, both Hiwanora Airport and St. Jude decisions were not taken by the cabinet of ministers. Mr. Speaker, member from Eco South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Again, the member is misleading the House. I don't think that there is a cabinet conclusion on both those matters, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Hiwanora, let me say it again, Hiwanora Airport and St. Jude Hospital, two committees were formed before any decision was taken 
two committees were formed that did not include members of the cabinet. These committees made recommendations <coughs> for both of these entities and they recommended the steps that we are taking now. In, let's go back to Hewan Laura. The IFC, the International Finance Corporation, an arm of the World Bank, this Prime Minister went to Washington to have a discussion with the IFC on the Ivanova International Airport. He was advised that they should continue on the PPP model. He was advised. They told him that that would be the best model based on the country's debt exposure and expertise in airport development. What he doesn't understand is that that even no airport situation has not ended. <coughs> so, so a lot of noise, a lot of noise, a lot of noise, but that airport situation has not ended. But let's get back to the facts on the ground. Because they moved the terminal building from where it was, it cost the government initially, before the structure could start, because of the piling, the foundation went up I don't, I want to give the exact figures, but I'm going to talk about to me. The, the foundation cost went up about $40 million because they moved the, the, the terminal from where it was supposed to be to where they put it because of the piling that had to take place. So they started the UNR airport with that, with a massive cost of a run. When the committee looked at the situation. There was a discussion in the cabinet that we should, we should consider that sunk funds. That that should be sunk funds and let us move on the other side. But when the cabinet further deliberated, the cabinet said that you couldn't have 40 something million dollars in the ground and just leave it and go somewhere else. So, so we decided that we would, on the advice of the committee, we further brought in a consultant recommended by the IFC right. to look at the Hiwanora Airport. You will make him, he will make you believe that we just did it like him. Oh. It's not like all these phone calls they made for the contractor. And, and then further, we got a grant from the Canadian government for the IFC. We had to pay back the IFC. Yeah and apologize for the behavior. So many he gets up with this self-righteous behavior as if he was the best. He forgets the history. But you know, no matter how they try to, to, they try to spread all kind of lies and calumny, I'm, I'm going to defend the victory and defend the interest of the people of St. Lucia. Because we can't allow you to get back in government. Because, so let's get back to the airport. You and your single-mindedness went against the advice of the IFC, the advice of the IMF, the advice of the World Bank, the advice of some members of SLASPA, the advice of the opposition, and you went on the frolic of your own as it relates to the airport. If you had continued on the path of the airport, pre-COVID times, the airport would have cost about a billion dollars. The, the airport that you have there, would have, if we had continued with you, would have cost us about a billion dollars pre-COVID time, much just now. In good conscience, I could not put the people of St. Lucia through that expense. So here's what we did. And you said so before, and the member for Cash Resolve has always asked for a debate. The debate will come up. Because of the $46 million you'd spent on the piling that was unnecessary, but made necessary because you had shifted the terminal building to ensure that your horse investment would survive. We, we said that we would not treat it as sunk cost. So as we speak, we are designing, because you know, that, this, that airport, there was no bill of continuity. The largest infrastructure, that is the irresponsibility of the member for, for Microsoft. The largest infrastructure project in the country, there was no bill of continuity. 
There was no bill of quantities for the largest infrastructure project in the country. No bill of quantities. It was done on a project called as bill. As bill, the largest infrastructure project in the country. So here's what here's what responsible government is. Right now, we are getting a bill of quantities prepared, not by friends but a bill of quantity is prepared by independent experts to look at the new terminal building. Which has not been, there was no bill of quantities. You think the public of St. Lucia would ever know that you, the biggest infrastructure project in the country, after you shifted the terminal building, you instructed Slasper to shift it, caused us to have to have tied in costs with overruns of millions of dollars. You had no bill of quantities? For the entire project, you have no bill of quantities? And that's your responsibility as Minister of Finance, and you come with self-righteous. You, let's get to St. Jude. Let's get to St. Jude. Because, you know, you believe that because you can stand up and say your things with your accent, that you, people of, of this country, will listen to you. They have proven to you they're not listening to you. And they still continue not to listen to you. Because you are a stranger to many things. Some of them the truth. St. Jude Hospital. <clears throat> when you got into government in 2016, there was a handover report that you had from the engineers of St. Jude. I was the one who sat there and said there was a handover report. You hid it. You hid it. You refused to make that handover report available to the public center. You hid it. When we, I, sat there and I said there's a handover report, which you denied, you and your friend, the, the one who lost also, the one who said, I can never lose election, man. he lost. When, when, I made that point. And that's why you're all, you all on my case, so you know. You're on my case. I can take it, the people with me and God with me. When you and, and your friend here, when that handover report, <coughs> you all said you all never had it. The handover report disclosed that the hospital only needed, and you tried to malign the minimum for life, and he said so. The hospital was, had its issues, but the hospital could have been completed. It outlined the handover report. It outlined what had to be done. You used taxpayers' money and you paid suppliers for hospital equipment that up to now the people of St. Lucia have not got that equipment. And I met a supplier who said to me, What kind of government are you running? You all have paid me for equipment, and why, why, why haven't you all brought the equipment to be, to be used in the hospital? There is no reason. You cannot give me any scientific reason why you did not continue work on the St. Jude Hospital. Further. A member from Nico South. Speaker, I would make on the point of order the member is misleading the house and i'd like him to withdraw the statement that he made about the contents of the um the report in suggesting that the report outlined a process to proceed the, re the, 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 the report i read made no such made no such on that that has been made a document of the house and if we want to get into the veracity as to what he's speaking about, which I don't think I can do on a standing order, I will not. All I'm asking to do is to withdraw the statement, because the standing, the report that he's speaking of has been made a document in his house, and there's nowhere in the document in the house it says the things that he just said. Noted. The document outlined the handover report. Doesn't talk about handover report. The handover report. Out this mine. The handover. It's a little. Where does the report again? The handover report outlined where the hospital was and what was needed to complete it. Then you commissioned the report. 
And that report that you commissioned also said that they were, the, the report noted that the hospital was on a stop and go basis because there were no designated funds for the construction of the hospital. The report said so. The report that you commissioned. But the hospital could be used ex could be used for the purpose of which it was built, it could be done. You understand? Your own report said so. You refuse. You left the buildings. You talk about responsibility. You left millions of dollars for rats and for and for, the, for rats, for bats, for grass. You left these buildings to literally rot. You talk about responsibility. Three years you left them. Three years you left this. You left between ninety and a hundred million dollars to rot. Plus the fact, in your box, your box, with your box, you had to use the same buildings to make your box functional. <clears throat> and that's what the public must understand. The box that you build in, the buildings, the original buildings had to be used with the box for the hospital to be functional. And you must say that's not true. Rise on a, on a point of order. The box could not stand alone. The box was never intended to stand alone. The box was to be used with the original buildings that you call old. So when you come and you make this, 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 this example, you come and you, you make. When you come and you make these and you make these statements, these self-righteous statements about you perfect and you have the answers to all sin, and you have the answers to all solutions problems. You understand? You have the answers to all solutions problems. You refuse. Yes, Member from Amico South. I'm on the point of hallucination, Mr. Speaker. Are you yielding? What? Are you yielding? Are you yielding? Yes, he is yielding. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, the member is um, absolutely correct, Mr. Speaker. The part of the old building that was used was to house the laundry building, mm -hmm. the administrative block, and the cafeteria, because the remaining amount of building could not function with the core services of a hospital. But that's what he said, that it, could, it was not a standalone. Please proceed, Prime Minister. So, Mr. Speaker, so with, with, all his fis with all his fiscal responsibility, he left, he left about $90 million worth of work to be taken over by rats and bats and things. And we came and we came and we cleaned it up. We restored it, you understand? And now, it's as we speak, these buildings have been restored. There are people who came from abroad, <coughs> medical people, hostile people, and said, why did your government stop the, cons the work on that hospital? There is no reason, absolutely no reason, no scientific reason, why the work was stopped. And I'll tell you, I can assure you, and this is why that is the problem. I can assure you, because of the planning and because of the motives of our government, which basically is only to provide proper health care for the people of St. Lucia. That's our motive. We are going to finish the construction of St. Jude Hospital for the people of St. Lucia. And you refuse to believe that. You refuse to understand that. Because you had the opportunity. You had all the opportunity. <clears throat> because we supported you. We told you to continue building the original buildings. We, we supported you. We're not like you, that you oppose everything we do. We supported you and refused. Now, let's get back to the health and security level that you're speaking about. You're pretending that, you know, that it's such a bad thing, etc. You came here and you spoke about we don't have enough money for health care and enough money for health care and for education. You said that you never spoke about the health and security level. Now I gave one quote. 
You want me to give the other one? I gave one coat. You, if you don't tackle me, tackle me. Because you see, when I leave here, you're going to go and deny it. Because you're such a convincing fella at saying what you think the truth is. What you, the truth is what you believe. You're so convinced. In fact, you've convinced some people in that, that they may even believe you. They may even believe you, or some of them believe you. You reduce that by two and a half percent. I want to ask the public of St. Lucia, what prices went down when you reduced draft? Yeah. What grocery prices went down when VAT was reduced? Let's go along memory lane. You and your surrogates that go along memory lane. What grocery prices went down when you removed, reduced VAT? What grocery prices went down? Did the prices in the supermarket go down when VAT was reduced? Did anything? Did any of the food that we use, that, that the people of St. Lucia use, <coughs> did these prices go down when you reduced VAT? They did not. And it's proven. When you reduce VAT, inflation was between 1% and 3% at its highest. Inflation has reached the highest level from probably 2000, 2008 or 2000 and that nature. 6% global inflation. 6%. All the supply chain issues. When pre-COVID, there was deflation. There was deflation when you run the government. And you on record are saying that you should not, you tell me, <laughs> this guy. You're talking about 2.5% levy. When you were Minister of Finance, the price of fuel was the price of fuel was low because because of supply chain issues but you said in the public that you are not going to reduce the price of fuel in the pump you said so you said that you are you talk about health and security levy when you had the best times you had deflation you had a low price of fuel and you had a time you had the, the time when you could have brought down the price of fuel. You did not. And you are on your record as saying why you did not. Now, now, we live in times, global times, and anybody can tell you, if they speak to their relatives anywhere in the world, they will tell you how the price of food is, is increasing. We are concerned about the increase in the price of food. We are not deaf or blind. We understand that the price of food is going up. We have taken measures. We have taken measures to, to reduce the price of food, at least to, to keep it stable. You on record are saying that our idea of helping the poor is to subsidize flour, sugar, and, and rice. You on record are saying, I can play all these tapes for you. You on the record are saying that our idea of subsidizing for poor people is to subsidize rice, flour, and sugar. You know you're going to say that. You understand? But now you come here, and you without any shame talk about health and security levy. There was no evidence in your government that you did anything to reduce the price of food when circumstances, circumstances warranted that you could reduce it. There's no evidence. You could have reduced the price of food. You could have done it, and you want to blame me for that? You could have done it, but there's, you did nothing. You pretend as if you were never in government. You pretend as if you never run this country. You pretend as if you, you did not get, get a country when, when, the economy, you, when the economy was on the rise, and when the country had both, prim, had both primary and current surpluses. You pretend as if that country never existed for you, with your self-righteous pleas. So, the health and security level, as we said, is not like what you said is, is in, a, in, in a block box to be used for road construction. You've never disclosed how much money is in that lock box. Wait. Oh, well, you've never disclosed it. But you know, you're self-righteous. Where is the lock box? 
and how much money is in that lockbox. We say that the health and security level is to improve healthcare and to improve the security apparatus of this country. And there is evidence where we have done that. We said, if there is need for any changes, we're not like you. We, we not say I'm not doing the, the distress fund and I'm not doing that and I fire her because I can. We're not saying that. What we're saying is that if there is anybody who can give us ideas as to how we can collectively reduce the cost of living, we'll join them and talk to them. We've invited the Chamber of Commerce. They've given us some ideas. We are looking at it because we understand the price of food has gone up, even though we never owned any, any supermarket. We understand that. So we're not saying that, we, that we, there ought not to be concern, but to come here and to blame the government, to use cheap political tactics and cheap political propaganda. When you had the opportunity, when you're Minister of Finance, when conditions were much better to reduce the price of food, and you never did it. You reduced VAT. For who? Who benefited from your reduction of VAT? And you put a 150 tax that everybody suffered from. And you're talking about reducing the price of, of bus fares. How about this guy? <coughs> you see, Mr. Speaker, you, you, pass had the legislation that to tax charcoal, black pudding, <laughs> sauce making, black pudding making, that's your, under your government. And you're speaking about a, a health and security levy that is only on imported goods, imported goods that do not have, ex, that are not VAT exempt or are not zero VAT. -ed. And we are in the process of revising it all the time. But you refuse to say that when we have done that, we have removed VAT on building materials that people use for the houses. You're not saying that at all. And look, go ask the hardware manufacturers, the, the hardware distributors, what is the effect of that removal of VAT? Go ask them. Go and ask them. But you stand here and you, pro, you, you, you profess as if you are master in, in, in running the economy and to did so well on, on the arena. You must say your first two years before COVID, what you did, and let's compare the first two years under us. You want debate? Let's debate that. Let's debate it. Let's debate the first two years. Finally, you on and on about landing banana, landing banana, landing banana. I have told you several times before. I have told you several times before that these discussions on land sales and land leases are something that the country has to look at. You list out in Viewfort between 500,000 acres of land for part of it for less than 99 cents a square foot. So let's, let's talk about comparison. Let's talk about comparison. You did that. No, you, we can discuss it. 99, 99 square feet, 99 cents per square foot. You know? Also, but, but you, you come, you've come here. You've come here and you promised you were in negotiations with, with GPH. Why, why, why they fell, I know, but I go say. I'm not going to say. You know, because, you know, I did something, Mr. Mr. Member from Yugoslav. Sorry, Mr. Speaker. You come here and you speak about your self-righteousness and, and corruption. And, you know, it was a fellow like, like that, like involved in TMT, but that's not how I was brought up. I know TMT fella. So I allow you to say your things. But people tell you not things, you know. People talking, you know. People, are, especially as the other government now, people talking. Don't think they're talking, you know. Not because we are saying what they're saying. Don't believe they're they saying. They're saying things. They're saying. I remember you said your class let you down. You said so. You said that's the reason why you lost election, because your class let you down. But I want to inform you that people are talking. 
And when people hear you, you and your surrogates, making these statements of self-righteousness and making these accusations, they just shake their head and say, Father, forgive them for the people don't know what they've, did, what they've done. So, Mr. Speaker, I... No, that's that's from some Jews. I want to go to the road. To the road? Yeah, the road. So, me, so, Mr. Speaker, I want to come back and say that this water treatment in, in patients is part of the government's purpose of giving water to the people of St. Lucia. We were the ones who negotiated for the view for the water supply to give Labry to give Labry and these areas water. That's our bean. And you, sp you spoke about the the, the the Rosa Dam. We don't want to go into the Rosa Dam yet. Huh? Yes. Don't be talking about water supplies as if you are the king of water supplies. You know, and you pretend as if you all were never in government. You were in government. You're in government for more times than the Central Labour Party. Up to 2021, the United West Party was in power more often than the Central Labour Party. Check it out. So don't pretend as if you were never in power. You, were, you had all the opportunity to do what you said. All the things you say you did. Why did the people, re why did the people reject you? <coughs> you said the people rejected you because the Labour Party lied for five years, so you're going to lie for five years too. That's the reason you give you. That's the reason you give that we lie for five years. So you're for, and some people are saying, don't believe that he'll come as he came the last time. But we know we're coming differently too. It's not only you that come differently. We're going to come differently too. So, Mr. Speaker, I thank the members. And you know, anytime the mayor from Miku South gets up in this house, because we, 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 had ignored, we had ignored him for quite a while. Anytime he or his surrogates get him in his honorable house and misguide the public, as he continues to do, we are going to challenge every word of his assertion. Mr. Speaker, I thank members for supporting this bill. Thank you very much.